Thanks for joining us today. What we'll be doing is discuss some security and governance best practices for multi-tenant clusters. I'm Naveen Chakrapani, Senior Director of Product Management at Rafe. At Rafe, I lead various product initiatives, including ones involving multi-tenancy and developer self-service. Prior to Rafe, I was in various product management roles, primarily in the cybersecurity industry. Thomas, do you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, I'm Thomas Labarusias, French guy. I'm developer advocate at Sysdig. I'm mostly focused on Falco. You will see what it is right after. And I'm so CNCF ambassador for a week now, and I was SRE for almost 10 years before. Thanks, Thomas. So what we'll do today is first set the context in terms of what are the things you need to be thinking about when you're implementing multi-tenant clusters. And then we'll dive deep into two specific areas, control access, we'll talk about how Palace can help, and we'll also talk about runtime security, and Thomas will be talking about how Falco can help you secure your Kubernetes environments. First things first, what we've seen customers do, and this is very critical for success, you need to establish clear guidelines in terms of who gets a dedicated cluster versus a namespace or a bunch of namespaces. Uh, the pattern that we see increasingly is that by default, uh, application teams get namespaces, a bunch of namespaces, and only if certain conditions are met, a dedicated cluster uh, is spun up. Uh, this helps with cluster sprawl, uh, reduces the cost spend, which is very important, but also adds some unique challenges in terms of security and governance, and that's going to be the focus. So we'll be focusing on the infrastructure piece, the things that the platform teams mostly care about in today's session. This slide just talks about some of the reasons why we've seen customers set up dedicated clusters. And the pattern, as I mentioned, is that in case an application does not check the box against any of these, they go for a shared cluster where the application gets allocated a namespace or a bunch of namespaces. Okay, from a security and governance standpoint, this, this list is not exhaustive, but these are the most important things that platform teams need to be thinking about. You would have seen a lot of these boxes when the New York teams presented, starting from the left, uh, controlled access. So what does controlled access essentially mean? It's bringing together three things. One is Kubernetes RBAC. Second is integration with your identity provider. And third one is secure access, making sure that your Kube API servers are securely accessed. And I'm gonna be talking about this in a little more detail, how Palace can help with this. The second problem is noisy neighbor issues. Namespaces aren't isolated by default in Kubernetes. How do you make sure that namespaces belonging to one team cannot communicate with namespaces belonging to the other team? And there's a nuance as well, because you want some of these application namespaces to be communicating with namespaces, for example, could be running security tooling like Falco. You also want to enforce resource quotas to make sure that the applications don't end up consuming more resources than they should be in a shared cluster model. And in, at the bottom, you can see some of the open source tooling that you can use to solve some of these challenges. The third piece is policy enforcement. In addition to making sure that your parts are running uh, with the right privileges, you also have to think about uh, bringing in policies which ensure that the teams are labeling their resources appropriately. As an example, a container could be tagged as vulnerable. How can you easily find which team it belongs to so that your remediation is, is faster? You can use OPA Gatekeeper or Kiverno uh, engines for, for this purpose. Runtime security, Thomas will be talking about in more detail. The last piece is, is resource utilization. It's very important to track resource utilization metrics because without that, you have no clue uh, what is uh, appropriate from a, an optimization standpoint. Uh, you'll be running blind and you'll never be able to drive any cost optimization uh, exercises. Okay, Parallels uh, was conceptualized to help customers implement zero trust access for Kubernetes environments. So traditionally, there have been approaches. You can use a Bastion, you can use Jump Host, VPN, et cetera. But all of these are expensive, uh, and they are also uh, not scalable. For example, a Bastion means that you'll have to, a Bastion model 
would require that you have a bastion per data center, per VPC, VPN costs a lot of money, and then you don't have any uh, audit logs into who's doing what. So Parallels, we introduce, we conceptualize and introduce the Parallels tool to help solve some of these problems because your clusters could be running in a cloud environment, it could be running in your on-premise data center. How do you enable the same experience for your end users? How do you also ensure that based on your group identity of the user uh, in, in your IDP, the user automatically inherits the right kind of privileges to access Kubernetes clusters? Because you want a single source of truth and typically the single source of truth is your identity provider. So Parallels has mainly two components. One is the box in the middle, the Parallels server, which is the access proxy. And it would also install a lightweight Kubernetes operator, a Parallels operator on the clusters. So this maintains a long-standing connection with the Parallels server. So your firewall teams just have to allow outbound 443, right? So there are no other things that your platform team need to allow for this to function. So let's start from left to right. Uh, so I'm going to be taking the experience of an end user in this case, but it holds good for any tooling like Argo, Flux that could, you could be running which are interacting with the clusters. So an end user uh, starts running a bunch of kubectl commands. The first thing that happens is it hits uh, the Parallels server. The Parallels server figures out is the user authenticated? And if the user is authenticated, what kind of roles and privileges should the user have on that cluster? Once that determ determination is made, and that determination is made as part of step two, uh, a just-in-time service account is created. Right? You can see number three, just-in-time service account. This is extremely critical because one of the challenges uh, that uh, organizations face is, let's say, the user moves from one org to another, or the user leaves the company. So you don't want dangling service accounts on your cluster. So how do you make sure that uh, the service accounts on the cluster are current and you don't have any stale uh, accounts that could potentially compromise uh, the security? So after step four, step, uh, step three, step four, the user interacts with the cluster. Uh, it's business as usual. Uh, but one of the key things that organizations also want is centralized visibility. How do you know all the kubectl commands that the user or the tool is running against the cluster? How do you go back in time and figure out who did what in case uh, there's a need for a forensic analysis? Uh, that's super critical and that's something that's available as part of the Parallels tool. And the last one is ending the session and removing those service accounts. So there's a timer uh, which makes sure that after a certain point of time, period of time of user inactivity, the service accounts are automatically removed from the cluster. It ties into the story that I uh, mentioned earlier, where you don't want dangling service accounts on the cluster at any point of time. So to summarize, Parallels helps organizations implement zero trust access and implements an experience where users can securely interact with their clusters anywhere uh, from anywhere. They could be working out of a cafe for all that you care. And this really helps ensure that your Cube API servers are protected and the right kind of security posture is, is maintained. This page calls out a few resources around uh, Parallels. We don't have time for a demo today, but uh, we have a demo booth in the project pavilion. Please do stop by in case you have any questions or you want to understand more about Parallels. Uh, I'll now hand the stage over to Thomas, who will be talking about how Falco can help. First, we need to discuss about what is runtime security. It's it's not really famous concept right now, but basically it, it is about all processes, all tools you can implement in your clusters, in your environments to protect your applications when they are running. So it's for, it's for the protection of yourself, of your infrastructure, especially in a multi-tenant contest, because when we share resources, bad things may happen. We know that. And Sorry. And uh, also protect your end users, customers, and you, your business, of course. This is with that in mind that Falco has been created a few years ago. So Falco is a CNCF incubated project, which will be graduated soon. Let's keep in touch. Uh, it's cloud native in the idea behind is we 
Falco is able to detect that the event occurred inside the container in Kubernetes or not. We have a lot of stars and so. To do so, we collect syscalls. Basically, imagine the syscalls as the API between your application and the kernel. If an application needs some resource, a connection, bandwidth, uh, memory, anything, this application has to ask the resource through the kernel, through the API syscalls. So we collect the syscalls with an eBPF probe, a modern, powerful, sexualized by design eBPF probe. It's pretty common in the industry right now. We talk about Cilium. Cilium is working with eBPF. The good thing with that is, by design, it's made to be secured, performant, and it's not supposed to break anything in your kernel. You don't have to inject custom code like we did before with kernel modules. And with the last versions of Falco, we also what we, co we call a Cori probe. Cori is for compile once, run everywhere. Before, we had to compile the probe for every kernel that exists. And now, we've only, with the same probe, we can run Falco almost everywhere. So how it works, we have the probes collecting the syscalls at the kernel space. This is the only part of the whole chain who needs, which needs um, privileges. After that, the syscalls, the events, are exposed in the user space, and Falco is running in the user space. So by itself, Falco is not a privileged application. It's secured by this way. So we collect the events from the kernel, and we are able to enrich them with some metadata, for example, pod labels, the pod name, the pod um, namespace, or container name, container ID, container image, because all these events are not available directly at the kernel level. And then we have a rule engine. Falco but mostly, is mostly a rule engine. We have a lot of default rules. You can write your own. You can share them with the community, and you can ask the community to help you with. And Falco will apply these rules over the events that has been captured by the eBPF rob. And if a suspicious event, suspicious behavior, a possible threat is detected, it will create an alert. We also have plugins. At the beginning, Falco was only able to collect syscalls and apply rules over these syscalls. And almost one year and a half, we created a plugin framework. So now Falco is technically able to ingest any stream of events you may have. So basically, logs. So right now, we have plugins to collect EKS logs, basically the audit logs from the control plane in EKS, CloudTrail, GitHub events, Kubernetes native audit logs, Docker, Twitter, it doesn't work anymore. Just say, say thank you to Elon for that. Nomad, we created that plugin with HashiCorp. And in the future, we may also have a Parallels plugin because Parallels by itself creates audit logs. And we could ingest these audit logs in Falco, create rules over these, these uh, events, and alert your, your teams or else. So the global picture is that we have the eBPF probe for collecting the syscalls. We have the plugins to collect any kind of events you may have, logs, Falco with its role engines, a set of rules, and the output. By default, we are able to forward the events, the alerts, to, into the standard hot, into a file, a program. Basically, it's a pipe, uh, syslog, HTTP, or gRPC. We provide a set of default rules, uh, mostly 80 system rules and 40 for the audit logs, basically with the plugins. And right now we cover the most common attacks and techniques that are used by the hackers to um, gain privileges, to write or read sensitive files, to execute any strange binaries in your clusters or Dockers or Linux OS. And same for the audit logs. Um, we detect the execution of a, of a shell in a pod, the creation of a coffee map. With, if we detect, for example, AWS credentials in a coffee map, we are able to rise an alert. If you want an example of what an alert looks like, you have a global output. It's a message for us human. We have a priority. You can filter them by priority. We have the name of the 
of the rule, the time, timestamp, obvious, and the output fields. Basically, the output fields are all elements that have been replaced in the output message. In your rule, you set a message with tokens, and these tokens will be replaced by the specific elements of the event, the container name, the pod name, the, uh, the pod namespace, whatever. And you can find out all these output fields in that uh, JSON part. And for example, when something bad is happening inside Kubernetes, you have a field about the namespace, the pod name, and we are also able to collect the pod labels. Could be, in the case, in the situation of multi-tenant cluster, you may have specific labels for customer A, customer B, or else for business unit A, business unit B, you may find which customers is impacted because we have the labels, because we have the namespace. So, to forward these alerts into your ecosystem, we created, I did it, Falco Psychic. And Falco Psychic basically is a proxy between Falco and your ecosystem. Right now, we have, last time I counted, 62 integration. So, we collect the Falco alerts and you can send forward them in a fan out mode to your message system, your chat system, to a message queue, a streaming server, and also for cold storage uh, or else, and we also have function as a service, serverless. So technically, you will be able to react, to remediate. If you send these alerts through fac with FACOSACI to Lambda function, to Knative, you are, if you are able to write the function, you, are, you will be able to remediate in real time. Remember, Falco is running at kernel level. So technically, we see all events in near real time. So if you are able to quickly react, you could protect your infrastructure, protect your customers as fast as possible. We also have for debugging an interface, a tailor-made interface for Falco event. It's, it comes with Falco Psychic and you can play with it um, um, at the bootstrap just to see what happens in your, in your cluster. So technically, we have Falco for the detection, we have Falco Psychic for the notification. Falco Psychic is also able to inject on the fly labels in the payload, in the event. So you can add some elements, some um, information that are not available for Falco, like the region of your clusters, uh, the name of your cluster, anything, and then forward to your, to your um, backends, and you can also filter by priority. For example, you can send all the alerts into Elasticsearch for statistics, for nice visualizations, then you want to uh, awake the SRE only for uh, alerts with a priority above critical, for example. Like for Parallels, we don't have a lot of time for a demo right now. Come to join us uh, at the booth, uh, F26, and all links are there. And we have technically a little bit more than five minutes for the questions, if you have. And the first volunteer wins the plushie. No question. Or oh, it's yours. It's a good question. It's a common question. Basically, this is why we created Falco Psychic UI. It's just to give you an overview of what alerts you receive, you create uh, in your cluster. So the good um, way to process is to just watch for after a few minutes, few hours, and you will have to tune a little bit those rules to add some exceptions. For example, if you are running Falco inside the EKS cluster, you will have a lot of noise about what the node itself is doing to manage the control plane, manage the kubelets, and you will have a lot of noise about the retitions of the tokens for the Cervical seconds. So, if you see that, you will be able to add in white list, in hollow list, uh, these specific elements that are technically legit. 
you have what list for all rules, basically. We, you can add or remove. For example, we have some lists that contain only a list of IPs for really known crypto miner servers, for example. It's a YAML file, basically. No, no, right now, no. we can discuss with that, uh, about that later after. But we have a tool called Falco CTL, Falco Kernel, is in charge to uh, watch your Git repository and synchronize the rules between your Git repo and Falco. So this is how it works now. But you can change that and use anyone, anything else. In my previous company, we used Argo CD to manage the config map with the rules. You can have um, as many coffee maps do you do, do you need? Do you need no problem with that. It's just you at the beginning as a bootstrap Falco will read inside the folder, so you can add how many YAML you need. No problem with that. Yeah. If you already have a free ND or else to collect the logs, you don't have to use Falco Psychic. But if you want to integrate more Falco, if you want to have more integrations, it's easier. But it depends what you already have in your ecosystem. But technically, Falco Psychic is really dumb. It's just a proxy. So it takes the events and tries to send them as fast as possible to the output. So it's a little bit quicker than using the log parcel. Any other questions? I like that I have more precise. <laughs> you will be have you also. Sure. Thank you all.